Good evening. If you have your Bible, Hebrews chapter 5. To begin, I want to talk about something that's happened in my family's life. Uh, Luke and Abigail have both had their birthdays this last week. Uh, their 16th and 12th birthdays. And we have a tradition in our family that on your birthday, we do something. We have a wall in our home, and high on the wall is the name Luke, and right beside it is the name Abigail. On their birthdays, what we do is we have them stand right underneath their name, and we mark their height to see how they have grown over the last year. Now, the good news is this year, the mark is higher than the year before which means my children are physically growing. That's good news because growth means health. If something grows, it often means that it has health. If one of my children stops growing during their growth years, that's a cause for concern. It would be for any parent. Now, we know there comes an age where we stop growing. Sometime around the age of 20, we physically stop growing. This is normal. When it comes to physical growth, there's a, a time where we stop growing physically. However, as a Christian, there's not an age that we reach that we're not to grow while we're here on earth. For those in Christ Jesus, we should always be growing spiritually. Growing, getting closer, deeper, more mature in Christ. But... It raises the question, I can measure my child's growth physically. How does one measure spiritual growth? We can't have them line up against the wall and mark their height. It doesn't work that way with spiritual growth. Tonight what we're going to do is have a test. A test of where we are spiritually. To measure if we are growing spiritually or not. To do so, what we're going to do is look at people in God's Word that were not growing. And from this group of Christians that are not growing, we can learn some truths that can help us to see if we are growing spiritually. Let's begin in prayer. Father God, we come before you tonight just thankful. We're thankful that we have your Word. We're thankful that even through this coronavirus that we're in, we still have uh, ways and abilities and means that we can communicate the gospel of Jesus Christ. That we can encourage and edify each other so that we can grow, so that we can know, and that we can show what is important, what you've called us to, and to point a lost world to you. God, unto you be all glory, honor, and praise. In the name of Christ Jesus we pray. Amen. As we shared earlier, we're in Hebrews chapter 5. Uh, Hebrews is a book written to a Jewish Christian audience. It's written to Christians who come from a Jewish background. Now in the first part, first portion of chapter 5 of Hebrews, the writer compares Jesus with a man named Melchizedek. You'd find Melchizedek in the book of Genesis. He was the king of Salem and a priest. Now, in the first portion of Hebrews, the author of the book compares this wonderful Melchizedek, who's in the Old Testament, to Jesus, showing the greatness of who Jesus Christ is. Very deep, wonderful truths. But it's at this time that the writer turns from these deep truths to address a serious problem with the audience he's writing to. Let's read verses 12 through 14. Chapter 5 says, For though by this time you ought to be teachers, you need someone to teach you again the first principles of the oracles of God. And you have come to need milk and not solid food. For everyone who partakes of milk is unskilled in the word of righteousness, for he is a babe. But solid food belongs to those who are of full age, that is, those who by reason of use have their senses exercised to discern both good and evil. The writer of the 
book of Hebrews addresses this audience and says, You've been taught deep truths, and as long as you've been taught these truths, you ought to be able to teach by this point. However, instead of being teachers of deep truth, it says that they still require first principles. What is first principles? The basics. The ABCs of the faith. He then gives a spiritual parallel here. He says that these people have not moved past the spiritual milk. They've yet to stomach solid food. Now, if you've been around a newborn, you understand. A human baby is not born with their teeth exposed. It's just gums. And they cannot eat solid food. They require milk. Only milk. Probably for the first six months. It's just milk. And milk is good for a baby. That is God's design. However, as that baby grows and the teeth begin to come in, that baby needs milk. But it also needs solid food. A baby that is growing takes milk and solid food in order to grow and mature. Now the writer of Hebrews is saying that these people are not longing for the spiritual solid food. They're not longing for the deep or deeper teachings of the Word of God. They are more like spiritual babies. This church that's been written to is not stomaching solid food. They still require the spiritual milk, the basics of the faith. This is a people not growing spiritually. They're babes in Christ. Now hear me. All believers should desire to not stay babes in Christ. All Christians should desire to move past just milk and onto the solid food, to the deeper teachings of God's Word. With that being said, it's time for our, our measurement to see how we're doing spiritually. Let us measure to see if we are currently Growing spiritually. Here is the growth checklist. Number one. Do you have a taste for meat? Do you have a taste for meat? I'm not talking about whether you're a vegetarian or not. I'm speaking spiritually. Do you have an appetite? Do you have a hunger to go deep in the word of God? To take the solid food of God's word. To go not just have the basics, but to go beyond the basics to grow in your faith. These people in Hebrews, they weren't even hungering for solid spiritual food. They only wanted the basics. They only wanted spiritual milk. Now what is spiritual milk? The basics of the faith. And the basics of the faith are good. We need to know about sin. The penalty of sin. How Christ died on the cross to pay the penalty of sin that we may have eternal life. The basics of knowing that we're saved not by works but by grace through faith. The basics. Now hear what I'm saying tonight. The basics are not bad. The basics. What it's saying here is we need more than the basics to grow in the faith. We should desire Spiritual milk, the basics, and desire, solid food. Deeper teachings from God's Word. Hear me, as an adult, it's still good to drink milk. It brings calcium to the body. So milk is not bad. But any healthy adult needs more than milk. They need milk and solid food. Christian, I have a question for you. Do you have a desire for solid food? From God's word. Or. Do you just want spiritual milk. The basics. Point two. Does the hunger for solid spiritual food. Lead you. To the table. When you're spiritually hungry. Do you crave the, the baby bottle. Or do you crave to sit down at the table. And have solid food. Are you making efforts. To. Nurture your spiritual life on solid spiritual food? Or are you continuing to rely 
simply on the basics. Here's where we're going to do some measurement. To see where you are, I have some questions. Not for you to just go and share with everybody. This is just for you. To see if you're growing in a desire, if you have a hunger for God's Word, to go deep. Question number one, are you faithful to read God's Word every day? Do you, when you come away, second question, when you come away from reading God's Word, do you have a desire for more? Third question, do you take the Sunday school lesson book that you have and study it deeper? Four, are you digging deeper in God's Word? Going not just with the text, but to try to understand what it means deeper. For example, I know someone who has a Bible app on their phone, and this Bible app gives you the Scripture and then a number to look up what the Greek or Hebrew word means. This person uses this app so that they can understand better what the Word of God says. Do you have something like this in your life? Or maybe do you use a study Bible and you read deeper to find out what it means? Do you use commentaries? Do you seek to know more of what God's Word says? If you answer yes to some of those questions, that means you have that hunger. If you look at those questions and go, you know what, I'm not doing any of those things. Check your heart. You might be craving spiritual milk and not solid spiritual food. Third measurement. Are you growing in your walk with God? When I measure my kids' height on the wall, I'm measuring their physical growth. Now, when it comes to spiritual growth, we can't measure a height on the wall. We have to measure something else. We measure our walk with God. Are we growing, going deeper in our relationship with Jesus? Now, coming up in June is going to be my 20th year anniversary of marriage to Julie. And I've, I've got good news for me. I, I love marriage. I'm closer to my wife now than I've ever been. We're still growing in our relationship. I'm still learning new things about her. I get to see her day by day uh, as she just models her awesome character in life. And I just fall more in love with her. I can say with all honesty that I am more mature in our relationship, me and Julie, than when we got started. Because I'm going to be honest, that first year was rough. <laughs> but as we have grown in our marriage, uh, we've gotten better and more mature. Now that's an example of marriage, but with our walk with God, it should be a relationship that grows, that it grows deeper. I want to ask some questions just to see how are you doing with your walk, your relationship with Jesus. Question one, are you more spiritually mature today than you were last year? Second question, can you describe your relationship with God as growing Static or receding? Last question. Are you doing what God has called you to do? That's just three questions I want you to answer or ask yourself. And how you answer it will tell you. Are you growing? Are you maturing? Or are you not growing? Are you still on the basics and not growing deep? On the solid food of God's word. So I want to review the measures. Number one. Do you have a hunger. For the solid food of God's word. Two. Are you making efforts to dig deep in God's word. Three. Are you growing in your relationship with God. Sometime this week. I want you to look at those measurements. And if. The measurement is that you are growing. Praise the Lord. And dedicate yourself to growing deeper next year and this the rest of this year however if you're not growing don't be happy with that don't be content lay yourself before God say God here I am and say Lord I want to grow let's pray Father God I want to pray right now for all those who are hearing I pray that every one of them is growing in their walk with you that for every believer that hears me today that they are growing in you but if there's somebody listening tonight that has never trusted you, I pray 
that they hear you, that they know that they need you, that they need the basics, knowing that without you, they cannot have eternal life. God, I pray that they trust you and go from death to life tonight. But God, for those who hear this prayer tonight, I pray for them. I pray that if they're a believer but they're not growing, convict their hearts. May they come to you and say, I want to grow. I don't want to be a spiritual baby. I want to grow in my faith. God, unto you be all glory, honor, and praise. In the name of Christ Jesus, we pray. Amen. Take care and God bless.